Hello friends, this video on electrochemistry part 28 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we'll see the product of electrolysis actually. See, sometimes we have more than one different kind of cations. For example, we have let's suppose Na plus also, Cl minus also, if we are putting in this aqua solution, right, then we have H plus also, OH minus also. The question is, what will the product? Will the product will be hydrogen gas or sodium or chlorine gas or NaOH or HCl? We don't know. There has to be some ways to find what the product will be for a given reaction. Right? So, pretty straightforward the product of electrolysis will have to depend on the nature of material being electrolyzed. Correct? Now, if the electrodes are inert, please note if you are using inert electrode here, please inert. So this inert electrode will not take part in chemical reaction. For example, platinum, gold, they are inert electrode. They don't take part in chemical reaction, but the only thing is they provide a surface area and they act as source or sink and they provide a platform where the reaction can happen. Right? But, so electrodes, if you see, are of two types. One is inert, they don't take part in reaction. For example, platinum, gold, or they can be reactive, reactive electrode. For example, copper electrode, zinc electrode, right? Or uh, iron electrode. These electrodes actually take part in the chemical reaction also. We have seen in the electroplating, this copper electrode, copper may goes from left to right. So these electrodes take part in the chemical reaction. Now the product of electrolysis will depend on the different oxidizing and reducing capacity of the species involved in this electrolytic cell. That is their standard electrode potential we have to see. Here we have the concept of survival of fittest. Correct. So if you talk about, let's suppose uh, this is my anode and this is my cathode. So if we talk about cathode, we generally take cathode first because we have cathode, we have reduction happening and we have all standard potential as nothing but standard uh, reduction potential, right? So if we have two substances, so one has higher reduction potential, one has lower reduction potential. The priority will be given to higher reduction potential, right? So at cathode, higher positive value of reduction potential or standard potential will be chosen and that will be reduced that will be reduced okay similarly for anode we have oxidation happening so here Higher oxidation potential will be chosen because the one which has higher oxidation potential has more chance to get oxidized. But since the standard potential is reduction potential here, so we can't use oxidation potential. So instead of higher oxidation potential, we use lower reduction potential, right? Instead of higher oxidation potential, we'll say lower positive value of reduction potential will be chosen. And they will be oxidized. We'll take some examples to understand this. So just understand the basic concept at cathode. Since we have reduction happening, we'll first find out what is the product in cathode. Right? We have all this uh, standard potential, nothing but reduction potential. So the element which has higher capacity or higher tendency to get reduced will have higher reduction potential, obviously. So that will be chosen. If I have two options here, for example, here, I have Cl minus and OH minus, the one which has, sorry, I have H plus and Na plus, right? The one which has higher tendency to get reduced, I'll pick that. I'll take one example where I have NaCl aqueous, where I'll explain that with values also. But here, out of H plus and Na plus, I'll pick the one which has higher reduction potential. And 
here if you see I have deficiency of electrons so here oxidation is happening at anode so here out of OH minus and Cl minus I will pick the one which has more tendency to get oxidized that means which has lesser reduction potential we'll see that we'll see that we'll see some example right but before going deep into this as I told that so we have we generally have a molten form of electrolytes molten or aqueous electrolytes right so where we have aqueous electrolytes we have water also and that will be either oxidized or reduced sometimes not always again because here if you see water is also in the game so let me write the reaction for water reduction and oxidation and their volt please remember this this is very important because for water if you see this is water if you see in water what can reduce hydrogen has plus one charge and oxygen has minus two charge right so the only possible reduction is this H plus H can becomes hydrogen gas that is the only possibility because oxygen can't have minus three oxidation number so what will happen is this will take electrons and becomes hydrogen gas and what you get is 2OH minus is to balance this equation so what I'm getting is 2, 2, 4 yeah this is the balance equation and for this reduction potential is E reduction is E naught is minus 0.83 volt minus means this is non-spontaneous reaction that means water will not reduce on its own correct if you talk about for water oxidation so again I have water I have H plus and O2 minus what can oxidize hydrogen can't oxidize already in the plus one oxidation state so oxygen will oxidize and it will become oxygen gas and it will release some electrons if you want to balance it so this becomes H plus 2H plus this is O2 so this 2 here 4H plus 4 this is my balanced reaction and for this my reduction potential is 1.323 volt so this is again if you see is plus charge and this is a reduction potential that means for this its oxidation potential will be minus 1.323 volt that we have seen right if the oxidation potential is x reduction potential will become minus x so the reduction potential for this is the reduction potential right it's standard potential so for this equation my E oxidation will be minus 1.23 volt and that also shows that since it is minus that means oxidation will not happen on its own so this means also this is also a non-spontaneous reaction correct I'm talking about oxidation if I want if I find the oxidation potential it comes out to be negative that means this reaction is also not feasible on its own so both are non-spontaneous reaction but they do occur if you pass electricity and we will see that just remember these two values minus 0.83 volt and plus 1 0.23 volt correct now we'll discuss before taking more examples we'll discuss a new topic called over potential so there's a trick here in fact nothing is ideal we have seen that nothing is ideal in this world there is exception always correct so in many electrodes actually the electrodes they don't behave ideally they don't behave ideally they don't behave ideally Correct. Sometimes what happens? The gaseous product we have seen hydrogen gases in uh, voltaic pile, right? So this sometimes the gaseous product that is obtained during this uh, process they get absorbed by this electrodes, and they hinder electrode reaction. Sometimes the transfer of electron from the electrolytes to the anode. This is anode, and this is cathode. So transfer of electron because electron is more rich here, right? So electron has to has to be transferred here. Right? The transfer of electron from electrolytes to anode is slow, sometimes from here to here or sometimes from here to here. The, the contact between electrolytes and the electrodes is not that fast, right? It's thermodynamically slow, for example, water. So with this, what happened is this slows down the electrode reaction. And here, the extra potential, this slows down electrode reaction, right? And for this, extra potential is required for reaction to happen. 
is required for reaction to happen. For example, if you talk about the oxidation of water, oxidation of water, correct? So we have just seen that oxidation of water E was my 0.123 volt, correct? This is E reduction actually. So that means if you apply 1.23 volt, water should get oxidized because E oxidation of water will be nothing but minus 0.123 volt. So you, by rule, if you apply 0.123 volt, water should get oxidized. But water never oxidizes below 1.8 volt. Minimum 1.8 volt is required or more to oxidize water. But, correct? But if you see as per thermodynamics, it should be 1.23 volt. But actually, it's taking 1.8 volt. So there's an over potential here, right? So over potential is nothing but the potential or the voltage difference between the thermodynamically determined value, that is this value, and the actual experimental reduction potential. Right, the thermodynamically determined reduction potential, this value, and experimentally determined re reduction potential. The difference between these two is called over potential. For example, in this case, if you assume 1.83, it will be almost 0.86 volt is my over potential. Correct. So, in case of electrolytic cell, example, this cell, the over potential means it requires more energy than thermodynamically expected to for the reaction to happen. In case of galvanic cell where you produce electricity, it means over potential means that less energy is generated than it is expected. Correct. For example, I told the transfer of electron from water to anode. Transfer of electron from water to anode is a very slow process. So extra potential is necessary to liberate oxygen here. And also please note this over potential depends on the metal used. For example, if you are using uh, inert metal platinum, the over potential is less. If you are using gold or using silver, so it depends on a lot of factors, right? But this understanding is something called over potential. Nothing is perfect in this world, correct? Now let's take some example now. We'll take the example of molten NaCl. When I say molten NaCl, that means I have only Na plus and Cl minus I, correct? So now I have this uh, cell, electrolytic cell. I have a positive charge here, negative charge here. So if I have Na plus and Cl minus ion, obviously since I have electrons here, electrons here, the Na plus will be attracted to this. So Na plus will take the electron and becomes Na. And this will happen and this is anode, this is cathode. This will happen at cathode. And Cl minus will go here, there is a deficit of electron, Cl minus will release electron to become Cl2 and electron. And this will happen at anode. There is absolute no confusion because there was only one cation and one anion in this electron. Pretty easy. Let's make things tougher now. So let's take aqueous NaCl now. So here we have with water. Correct. Now let's see what happens. See it at cathode and I have anode. So let me see this is my anode and this is my cathode. I'll have here Na plus, I have Cl minus and I have water also. I'll not break water into, I'll not break water into H2 into H plus and OH minus. A lot of people do it. I just take water because I know for water there is a reduction potential and for water oxidation potential, I know both the values, right? So at cathode, is my negative charge, this is a positive charge, I have more electrons here. So at cathode, we'll have reduction. Water can reduce, Na plus can reduce, water can reduce, anything else can reduce. So there are two possibilities, at cathode, possibility I'm writing here. Similarly, let me write anode possibility. Anode I have Cl minus, it can get oxidized, or even water can get oxidized. Correct. So let's see the cathode first. We have seen that cathode will take first because cathode we have reduction happening. So let's see this Na plus will take electron becomes Na. 
and the energy is minus 2.71 let's see with the water let's water reduce water will take an electron it will become hydrogen and become OH minus and for this energy is minus A to A that means to reduce sodium I need 2.71 volt energy to reduce water I need only 0.829 volt energy which is easy obviously this water why because I need lesser energy this is negative right if you see energy is negative that means this is non-spontaneous you have to give energy to for the reaction to happen so here this needs less energy this needs more energy so that means now here water will compete with sodium ions so instead of getting sodium we'll get hydrogen gas so this reaction won't happen so at uh, my cathode i'll get hydrogen gas i'll not get sodium let's see the anode one anode i have cl minus right and the cl minus is nothing but that will give me chlorine gas an electron so e reduction potential is nothing but 1.36 volt and i have water also water will give me oxygen and h plus and uh, two electron we have seen this reaction actually yeah correct right so for this my e reduction is 1.23 Good. We have seen this. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos. Attempt free online tests, get pre study materials, find tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.